Matt Hall here with Jermaine Henderson. Um, I was going to call you the newest member of the staff. That's not really accurate. <laughs> right. you, you've been here for a while, but you are, of course, now an assistant now with uh, with right. Coach Corn and, and Coach Larry and Coach Weber. My first question is ask like, how you got that news yeah. and, and your reaction to it. Well, I mean, it's interesting because if you know Coach Weber, he's everything but conventional. Uh -huh. um, and so um, I think it started as a, as a preview uh, to be – very honest. I'm not sure if it was sure. to test my skills or anything because I don't think that's not how coach is. Yeah. You know, he's he wants to judge people on their on their character, on their responsibility, etc. And so, uh, of course, there was recruiting mm -hmm. right out the gate uh, when Coach Frazier left. There was like you yeah. still had to go on the road, and I think um, Coach may have seen me as a, a viable uh, resource because I had been on the road before. Uh, yeah. But certainly, Coach Sparrow and. and uh, even down to some of our GAs, he could have appointed them to go on the road because sure. uh, it wasn't a lot of time this spring. But to get the official news, um, I think I held on to my contract a day longer than I should have. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to turn it in. And, and yeah. not for, um, to be very honest, not for salary or benefits. It was the fact that it was a step higher, but it was at a tremendous place, yeah. uh, K-State. And, you know, people get in front of the camera and say, dream come true. I I think it was a dream come true for my boss, for uh, a place so good, a place so rich in tradition, and then, of course, a, a place with everything in place. So yeah. the, the assistants and everybody uh, associated with the program. So, I mean, I was I was floored, uh, Coach. We just had a small, quick 90-second meeting, <laughs> as he does. He said, yeah. I'm going to move you up, and here's the salary, and here's the blah, blah, blah. And I said, Coach, I wanted to go hug him and of jump course. across. But if you know him, it's like, all right, let's get to work. And then he was out of my office. So <laughs> um, it, it, it was a blessing. It yeah. was a blessing. It's been a blessing to be here in this place, and certainly to be able to be part of the last two years of K-State history has been uh, a dream come true and, and certainly um, – Something I'll never forget. But uh, as you turn the page and then get a new position, it just turns a new chapter, not only in my life, but hopefully in our program that we can kind of continue on with success. Whenever a spot like this opens up, I think it's natural for fans, even myself, to look around and say, oh, yeah. my goodness, who could they go get to add to that <laughs> right. spot? When at the same time, we had a lot of talk, too. There's a lot of value in, within a program or a business in promoting <laughs> and showing people, hey, yeah. if you do the work, you know, yeah. you move up now. You have and Shane has. Like, mm -hmm. what is that? What I guess what does that mean to the whole program? I know this is a place oh. where as a player, coach, uh, you know, yeah. staff member, whatever, if you mm -hmm. do the job, you're going to get an opportunity to do more. Well, I think it means everything because in our business, it's so rocky. Mm -hmm. This thing will chew you up and spit you out in terms of um, – I know a lot of guys. I've been one of those people in the past who – thought I was in line right. for a promotion or an upgrade, and, and it didn't happen. So you have to keep going. But it certainly is fulfilling when you do a job. I think the 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 theme to it is do the, do the job the best you can do it every single day, no yeah. matter what the gain or the loss is. You have a job. I was employed, and, and I had a charge every day to try to make our players as good as I could make them on and off the floor while not being able to be on the floor. And so – it's very rewarding because you don't know it's going to happen. You think it could happen. Yeah. Um, you hope you're in consideration when it does happen. But again, like I mentioned uh, a little earlier, it, it was it was a true blessing. But then it was hard work does play pay off, and and to have a clean heart and an ability to relate to the players and and have the energy and the fire each day to just make the program go. I, I, I never cared about, you know, my role. Right. I never cared about what I had to do, whether it was late night meetings, making runs, all the different things we did for the players. But at the same time, um, that's the place I had been in the assistant uh, coaching seat. And, and so I was just thankful to have the opportunity again. I, I want to use this to learn more about you, but I am curious, you know, about the, the student athlete development role you mm -hmm. left, and then yeah. how you, how you think Shane, you know, yeah. fills that role and why oh. he can be good at it. Shane will be way better than me. <laughs> I mean, and I think it's because that's what you want when a guy yeah, replaces. He's his, K yeah, he's K State all the way. Yeah, he's I tease him all the time. He's New York City, <laughs> and he's a city boy that we yeah. made a farm boy, you yep. know. And and <laughs> Shane has a pulse on the campus. He has a pulse on the fans. He has a pulse on, more importantly, probably the expectation. 
um, of being a K-State men's basketball player and all that comes with it. Uh, he's certainly very decorated uh, with the success he had as an individual and then his teams had, but uh, a pulse on young people. He's not an old guy um, by any stretch, but he's got an old soul. You know, Shane sees it through the lens of a coach, and yeah. I tell him all the time, I think he's going to be a star in our profession. So it's the position – I always tell people, you get them – you get them ready for practice, and you get them after practice. Mm -hmm. And so everything in the role, I always say I like to keep my toes right on the line. I can never cross the line, but right, if exactly. you've ever been at practice, my toes are I, right on the line, absolutely. up against it. Yeah. And not because I just wanted to be on the floor, but um, I had an energy for those guys. Uh, a lot of times the day starts a little bit earlier than everyone else's because yep. there's meetings, there's academic components, there's community service. Um, but then there's just – making sure a guy has a good day. And then certainly after practice, here kind of winds a, a guy's day down. So now there's meetings, there's extra studies, there's go picking up books, there's um, making sure assignments are prepared for our tutors and, and our academic counseling. And so um, a full-time job, but a fun job as well. I, yeah. I told Coach when he promoted me, I tried to cut him off when he told me what salary I would make, but I said, I mean, <laughs> hope you know me, Coach. I don't care about right. that. I'm more concerned about – uh, our next recruits, where we can go get them, um, how we can form those relationships, and how I can be a different brand or a different voice to um, to the model we already have. Uh, that's incredible with, with Coach Lowry and Coach Corn, but on down the staff, uh, Bailey does a tremendous job. Absolutely, really does his part. Mike, although his video, it's video, it's still a, a great part of our program. So um, you get them ready for the day, but then you close down the day. You, you check on them late at night. Um, one of the biggest thrills is going to pick up food. It was a late night. Um, we had a real bad storm here. Uh -huh. And I had been out early, and so it tested the waters. And I got an SUV, and so and the guys were – everything was shut down, restaurants and everything. Well, we found uh, their favorite spot, Popeye's, was, was cooking <laughs> and going strong. Popeye's and I fantastic. talked to Barry, and he said – I took all the orders, you know, yeah. and just delivered the boxes. Now I almost got stuck in the apartment, in the parking lot at a you know complex. But those kind of things, when you're about the bottom line and winning and trying to provide services that lead to success, I, I don't think the job really matters. Yeah, I, yeah. with basketball staffs are different than football staffs. Mm -hmm. A lot of fans, you know, will look at and say. Uh, well, what's he responsible for? You know, right, to fall in the right. trap of O coordinator, D coordinator, yeah. quarterback coach. Yeah. Basketball, I know it's, I know you have mm -hmm. responsibilities, but yeah. it's not quite as cut and dry. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you feel like you're most comfortable with? If there's things that you're going to lay out and say, boy, I think I can really help with this, this, yeah. and this, like what would come to you mind? Know, for I you? think um, we all want to be great recruiters because right. recruiting is nonstop. Recruiting, um, I was sitting down with the compliance office yesterday and it was like, no to freshmen, somewhat to sophomores, mm -hmm. juniors are okay, seniors, you know, it, it's it, there's just this progression of recruiting. So we all want to recruit, but that's the future of the, the program, the bloodline of the program. But I think relating to people, having a pulse on people, mm -hmm. being able to push people to their limits is, I think, something that, that um, I'll be able to bring to the table. But also I think teaching the game. The one thing about Coach Weber that I just enjoyed – from having that voice that was on the sideline was how well he teaches the game, presents the game. Um, certainly at his age, you know, guys say, well, he's been around forever and yep. coach, we want to do this and that. But um, he has fun with those guys. And, and I told somebody on the radio the other day, he's funny as crap. Boy. I mean, <laughs> he, he cuts up with those guys. And so it lets you know that he's crossed the bridge of, of – this new player and positionless mm -hmm. players and what is the new Big 12 and is it as good as it used to be and all that crap. I think teaching the game is, is what I like the most. Okay. Again, I want to recruit. We want to get good players, but you're right. We'll be subject to a region or um, old relationships in, in recruiting, but I think my ability to teach the game because I've been able to form a relationship with the guys is what I like to hang my hat on, but, um, but the job does. It takes a variety of of moves and and uh, teaching different levels uh, to be successful. So. Yeah. With recruiting, obviously, it's easy for someone to kind of look at your background and say, oh, a lot of, you know, Ohio, mm -hmm. kind of that Big Ten country yeah. people talk yeah. about. You guys have a lot of strength there. I mean, of course, mm -hmm. with Coach, uh, Coach yeah. Weber's history yeah. there, Coach Lowry's history there. Mm -hmm. So is that a part of the country now that you guys already have attacked? I know you can't yeah. name names. Yeah. You see a lot of names from oh, yeah. Indiana, Ohio, oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. No is that doubt. a great area no for doubt. you guys It's, it's a tremendous area, and I think – um, we just do well with the kid who's always looking up. 
you know, I think sometimes with these kids, with the reputation, with all the media coverage and and all the Twitter and all the announcements, I think everybody, some kids start looking down at programs. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, at 16, 17 years of age, I think that can be a mistake and it can kind of cripple their, you know, careers or how good they can get. K-State, the one thing that I'm proud of from being around the program and assisting with recruiting on campus with, with our guys is we want those guys who are looking up to the program. Mm -hmm. And I think that was Dean's success. And I think that was Barry's success. Cam took the long way around and he went to prep school, but he looked up to K-State. And I think that's why those guys came here and made su such a, a big impact in their career. But um, we'll certainly get to the Midwest. I think down south has been good. Coach Frazier was was all over the Absolutely. place in a very good way in terms of forming relationships from when he played, but then also his, his bright personality, his energy, I think was infectious with recruiting those uh, unpopular areas. When you think Manhattan, Kansas, and you think Fort Lauderdale, St. Petersburg, Florida, you just, you just don't see the connection. But I think he did a good job of it. But certainly Coach Lowry, uh, in the Midwest, from the St. Louis's, you're right, to Indiana. I think Coach Corn has covered um, the Texas, Texas area, yeah. getting in Oklahoma, Chicago, um, with one of our signees this year. So uh, I think we have a brand that has become national. Not that it wasn't before with the tradition, but on the heels of the success of our recent players, it's, it's very, very uh, much so been a, a contribution. And I don't think we – it's indescribable because – you're in there. I've talked to four or five AAU guys from Florida, yeah. and the first thing they say is, wow, how about Barry Brown? Well, that right. speaks volumes for the recruiting um, and then the success they had here at K-State. I want to think back to a second of you as a player. You know, I think your last year, you, I mean, you were an absolute you know, a piece on that team, average yeah. about nine a game. Yeah. If you were going to take a, a recent K-State player for K-State uh -huh. fans to say, oh, my game was somewhat like that. Who, and I, I know it's hard to do, but who would yeah. you force yourself into? Who Man, would you say I, I played a little bit wow. like this guy? I'm going to tell you, it's, um, um, I, was a, I was a team guy. Uh -huh. It's crazy. I'll take you back. And this guy was on the bench a lot. Uh, Mason Schoen Absolutely. became an instant favorite. And I think his infectious energy off the bench and his leadership behind the scenes was a lot, you know, was a lot of me. I wasn't nearly as um, – um, as athletic uh, as Mike McGurl, but I think that was me. I was sure. just, just strong, stocky guy, played defense. I was very, very vocal. I did all the uh, the little dirty things, and, and I'm excited to see his role now. That was the extent of my role at Miami, but of course, I was on some great teams at Miami. So, a little bit of Mike, you know, drive and kick. You know, uh, Mike always fights with us that his game is is broader than that. Uh -huh. But you know, 25 years ago, I enjoyed sitting in the corner making open shots because we had drivers, we had post guys, um, we had big wings and all that. So, um, boy, it's a combination. But I tell them all the time, their talent is far, yeah. far eclipsed anything that I ever dreamed of. But I think it's why I became a coach to be able to enjoy um, that standard always being raised and what kids are. I'm a I'm 44 years old, so it makes me a little bit older, but right. I enjoy the young guys. I enjoy the young guys in the NBA. I enjoy the one and dones. I enjoy our college games. So um, a combination of, you know, those guys, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Um, because I didn't. I didn't spend a lot of time on the floor. Um, but I was on some great teams. But I thought I maximized my minutes and things like that when I played. We talked before we started about how you did just go straight into this out of, out of coaching and the, or out of, out of playing, and you've been yeah. coaching a long time. And you yeah. said something earlier, kind of referencing positionless basketball, positionless mm -hmm. basketball, and how the mm -hmm. league has changed. I'm curious from your perspective: is the game? Is, Someone like me or people a little bit younger make the game out to be totally different than it yeah. was in 1990 or that right. kind of stuff. Is it as different as it's hyped up to be um, or or not, I guess? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. I think we still we still start a four-man and a five-man right. who are 6'8", six, 6'9", six, and we're always looking for size. Uh, I think we still will take our time. I, mean, I remember when I, when I came, I came in with a seven-footer who was actually a prop. Uh, Chad Allen and I remember watching him work out and he worked out one at a time and we mm -hmm. always thought he was going to be a great player and he ended up playing some Euro ball you know after his career so I think the big man and his transition has changed the game some but you got to be able to dribble pass and shoot right uh, you got to be able to defend and rebound and then I think you always to the day whether you're Kansas State or Lipscomb College I think everybody's trying to establish the post and go inside and out so um, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody 25 years ago who wasn't trying to establish the paint, yeah. who wasn't trying to guard the heck out of you, and uh, certainly not turning the ball over. But, but 
we've put more emphasis on the positionless player because young people, you know, the six eight guy don't want to be in the Correct. post anymore. He yep. he wants to be a guard and. You know what, Cam Reddish, he looked like a 3-4 man to me at Duke. You know, right, or Zion exactly. Williams, while he's a freak of nature, you're a four man. You know, there, there's nothing uh, that says three. Now, I'm, he can guard one through five. So we put him in this position because it's a team game. And so um, for those reasons, I, I think the game has changed tremendously. Um, but I think a few years ago we changed some physicality rules because we wanted more scoring. Yep. And right away, Duke won a national championship playing in the 50s, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, against exactly. Butler. And, yeah. and so some of the best Big 12 games I've been a part of has been Texas Tech at K-State. Win or lose, I mean, just fighting and clawing. I mean, you, Texas Tech got up 16-2 to two this year, and they're beating us by like seven Absolutely. at their place without Get being three. in camp. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, the tenacity, the physicality, while you can make some rule, put some rules in place that change the game, I think it's it's still the same. I think you're still trying to get penetration and find the open guy. Yeah. Um, I think we've added a little wizardry, you know, with our passing and uh, things like that. But I think in its foundational form, I think the game uh, remains the same, and and that's because what it takes to win, I think, is the same. Yeah. I, I know the timing of your announcement, maybe. You couldn't be around the whole team at any point yet. Maybe yeah. you have, but I'm sure they had to be the players specifically. Yeah. What reaction have they given you to you getting this role? You know, it was it was good. You know, it was a lot of a lot of energy. Um, there's a lot of guys on our team who will certainly miss Coach Frazier course, in his role yeah. because he meant so much. I mean, I learned a lot. He's a lot younger. A funny story I told guys. <laughs> he was Lake Clifton in high school, and I recruited him at Miami University. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I went to a gym and watched him work out. And when he decided to go to prep school, we we gave that dream up. You yep. know, we knew we weren't going to be able to recruit him. But um, I think th they'll miss him just because he was so valuable. But I think they were happy. I think the continuity will help. And, and, and sometimes when you get promoted, again, you mentioned Shane earlier, I thought that move was, yeah. was tremendous as well. And I thought they went hand in hand because he's got – a great relationship with coach. He may have the best relationship with some of the guys. Maybe it's age, maybe right. it's his um, the way he sees the game. But um, I think they were pretty excited. Certainly they were happy for me. And so uh, it makes the transition, you know, all that much easier. And then now, of course, your peers with, with Coach Lowry and Coach Korn. Mm -hmm. Is there any hazing? Are they trying to give you, you know, all the far recruiting trips? Are you going to have all the I'll tough scouts? i tell you what, like... uh, between the Cleveland Browns, um, yeah. <laughs> between them just making me a Buckeye, I tell them, I went to Miami. If yeah. you go to school in the state, you're not in all of Ohio State. And I said, <laughs> I watch them. I think it's, they got pretty good football. Right. And I got friends on the basketball staff, uh, et cetera. But, no, it, I think if you work at K-State men's basketball, it's constant hazing, whether yeah. you're new, <laughs> old, young, black, white. And so uh, I think Coach Weber, in all seriousness, perform, uh, promotes an environment where he wants you to grow and he wants you to have input. And so that always comes with, with some hazing. Yeah. You'll jump out there every now and then, and you'll just condemn somebody in the office, and then you'll just catch a ton of flack at the end of the day <laughs> if you're wrong. But um, if there's been hazing anything, they always say, um, you know, just do it. Um, uh, just be yourself. And yeah. I've known, obviously, Coach Corn in a working environment longer than anybody. We were together at Missouri State. But I've had a friendship with Coach Lowry 15, almost 20 years. Yeah. Um, in the coaching profession. And so I've admired Coach Weber's work uh, from afar um, yeah. because he became poster boy for what assistants look like, believe it or not. Uh, when he was at Purdue, he stayed. He was uh, he was the uh, consummate uh, teammate in terms of being Coach Katie. I think he brags about he's the only assistant Coach Katie's never fired. <laughs> uh, but I think he's been rewarded in the yeah. latter part of his career with just – Great fortune, great people. Um, but when you are an assistant that long at one place, you not only pay your dues, you see it all. You see the good, the bad. I mean, I mean, can K-State say that they've ever seen maybe one player better than Glenn Robinson, you know what I mean, or a yeah. coach? And so when you put those things into account, I think that it makes Coach Weber one of the best. But um, that's been the blessing and the beauty of staying and being here and even being in my role uh, for a couple of years, you were able to learn. Yeah. And I, I told guys before, I tried to listen with my ears and leave my mouth you know, closed. He wants you to talk and speak up, but it was so much to learn, not just about the game, but about how we conduct ourselves as K-State coaches, as representatives of 
the university, uh, and also um, how we can make a difference. So I learned a lot in those, in those yeah. couple of years, but um, I keep coming back to it. It's just a, a blessing to be able to not be at a great school and then do it have a great job and be around great people I think the last question I want to ask is just about you know the basketball program going Mm -hmm. forward Uh, I'm always going to be a glass half full optimist guy so I'll probably jump to that point but we talked before we started about experience and and, you know age mattering yeah is what I'm trying to get to is the program in the place where you want it to be now where of course you just lost three great seniors no doubt about it and and it's going to be hard to just say yeah win a big 12 Mm -hmm. again with with those guys gone Mm -hmm. but you still are going to have you know assuming maybe he comes back from the draft you know x would be a three four year starter type Cardi's without the injury would feel like yeah. a third year starter no max a third year starter mike's played a bunch mm-hmm. like you, and even down down the line it looks like that would continue yeah. right at the point mm-hmm. where you feel like you're not you're going to keep having these teams that are relatively experienced and talented right. mm-hmm. um and then this bunch this year can still compete in that league no doubt i, I a guy on the radio asked me he said um uh, obviously there'll be a drop off and i sure. said i wouldn't choose that d word i would say we're going to win we're going to perform yeah we're going to be different the word is it is, is different for me but I think you're exactly right. Starting at the top with McCall Maywing just being a stalwart. He's uh, been a two-year starter. Mac never misses practice. Right. He, he started every game and, and then playing him in. It certainly deals with some issues, foul trouble, et cetera. But he's been – I mean, that, that's a great cornerstone stone to start for us in the post. But Xavier Snead, what can you say about him? His leadership, his effort, uh, who he is. I think he's ready to take on the role of leadership yeah. for our team. He's always – uh, play with great players from Wesley Wandu. I mean, Barry Brown and all those guys being in front of him. Um, I, I think this is going to be great. I, the guy I like to – I said it at our banquet um, that I'm really excited for is Cardi HR because I think to make those jumps that he's going to need to be one of the premier players on our team and in this league, he's going to have to work on the things that um, has probably hindered him a little bit. And it's, it's nothing negative at all. It's just um, – First thing is you have to be able to play longer. You have to be able to play through things. Yep. He's had the advantage of one foul, quick foul. You know, he's injured. We had somebody else. He's going to have to be able to play with one, two fouls. But then I think um, if he can bring his effort each and every day and that ability to get better in practice, certainly um, work on the other side of the ball. He's a tremendous offensive talent, and he's been working real hard this spring to, to bring his defense along. If he can put those things together, I think it'll be special. So when you think of the core, I think you're right there with anybody in our league in terms of returnees. Uh, the Big 12 Conference is always going to lose great players. Sure. There'll be one and dones. And when you have the marquee programs in our league like you have, um, there's going to be some turnover. But I think there's enough there to anchor us down. But then when you talk – Mike McGurl, I think Sean Williams getting better. Of course, yeah. I think those guys will help tremendously. And we're excited about our freshmen. Um, we're excited about their energy. We're excited about their dimensions and, and things of that nature. But I, I think the word is different. Um, I don't know how many leads we've had or how, how many games where we could just coast. I think, I think our, um, our level of concentration, our level of competing, I think our level of togetherness, uh, will rise, and that's not a shot at the seniors. Sure. Sometimes we could just give it to Dean and he could make a play. We all know what Barry Brown could do at the end of games, and then you mentioned West Virginia earlier. Uh, and Cam Stokes, I thought, was really um, sort of the backbone on the perimeter for yep. us. Him coming along and fighting through injuries down the stretch helped us be champions. But um, you, you always – you never want the cover to be bare, and you're always scared if too much comes back. Mm-hmm. Um, to be able to be selected to win the Big 12 and then to actually do it with everything we endured, I think is tremendous. You talk about 7-2 and two on the road, right. and you talk about beginning 0-2, and, and then the injuries you know, that came along with that. It's, I think it was a tremendous feat to, to be champions of our conference. But you do, when you're starting over and those guys leave the program, you are excited for the returnees. You are excited for the newcomers. Where it can go, I don't know. Hopefully we break the Tulsa jinx and we beat them at home this <laughs> right. year. And I think it'll just be different. I think we'll have freshmen who will say, heck with that zone, you know, versus where some older guys are like, yeah. here we go again, Tulsa, play in the 40s, <laughs> you know. And so – but but those were tremendous learning experiences for us. And guys like Cardi and Mike and Mac and Levi and James Love, hopefully we can take something from – those games like the Tulsa, having Marquette uh, back home this year, yep. um, I think we'll, we'll get a chance to show our growth. So um, 
I think it's a great place to be because we have some familiarity. I think maybe Coach was looking for that when he promoted me sure. and, and, of course, Shane. Um, some guys who knew the program, knew the league, had had some work in assisting the coaches and some of the scouting. But um, it's always going to be a grind. It's always going to be tough because Kansas will have their guys and sure. Oklahoma and Texas will recruit and, and West Virginia will try to out-tough you. So the, the formula won't change. It will just be different, um, I think. Uh, you'll be excited to see the young guys flourish because they'll have to. It takes us back three or four years ago when Cam, Barry, and Dean were thrust into those roles. Not quite there because we just had um, – we won't have as many changes, but the turnover I think is good. I yeah. think um, those guys uh, did a tremendous thing here at K-State, those three seniors. So, uh, of course, the guys like Mason Schoen and then Pearson who will be back with us this year, but, but we're just overly excited about – what the new guys bring and I think that's a good place to be well coach I just uh, I want to say thanks for the time I really appreciate yeah. it best of luck yeah. um, and congratulations man it's a great yeah. great honor and thank you guys you guys do a great job thank we're you. certainly thankful to do it and anytime we you know we can help and be part of not just promoting the, the program but I think um, um, we talked about I did an article with Corbin and we talked about peaks uh, yep. and valleys and I said trust me after 22 years of coaching um, you experience some peaks and some valleys, and some, some you don't want to face the world. You know, not being yeah. hired at my alma mater, I mean, it was crushing. It was disappointing, but um, you cheer for the next guy because I was an alumnus, and I always want to see my my school be successful. But if you're not growing and learning from those, then you know, then then they're not the lesson. Somebody said one time. Um, Experience is what you're left with when you don't get what you want. <laughs> yeah. Experience and wisdom, yeah. you know. And so, um, I don't know, coming here two years ago, I was like, yeah, what is this? But you learn the aspects of the program. You learn the wall bash. You learn the <laughs> energy. But then you learn that it's not all roses. Like you said earlier, it's not everybody who wants to see the program do well. Some people are just sitting there. Yeah, yeah, you did well. But the demise, boy, they jump in, you know, feet first. But yeah. you won't get that out of me, win, lose, or draw. Right. I think if anything, my old bosses, I've had tremendous bosses, Paul Lust at Missouri State, Gary Waters, tremendous coach at Cleveland State, and certainly um, Charlie Coles, who's passed on. Yeah. I mean, my bosses and, and, and uh, characters of this game have been tremendous, and they taught me a lot. And the one thing um, Charlie used to always say is shake a man's hand. If he whips your butt in those 40 minutes, <laughs> shake his hand. Yeah. And, and uh, always be quick, you know, with the team, uh, wins or losses, because we get carried away at times. And what you guys do in the promotion of the program, I think is always good. Like sure. you said, the news is not always, <laughs> you know, bright. Right. But, but I, I would imagine when Barry Brown committed and said, I'm coming without visiting, who's right. this kid from Correct. Florida? You know Absolutely. what I mean? Like, yeah. I think sometimes everything takes time. You know what I mean? And and we have to wait, you know, on the tail end. I, I don't like that about young guys now. It's, well, Zion's going to be the greatest ever. Jesus Christ. Well, we, <laughs> we, we got a great game here. We're trying to foster. Yep. And then I do that with the uh, Greek now. freak. Is he really <laughs> the best? Yep. I think it's it's all that. That's why there's an MVP every year and not every other year. I think yeah. there's a – that's why there's a most outstanding player in the finals. And certainly I think that's why there's a preseason and, and, and postseason uh, voting for Big 12. Because, yep. like I said, when I came in, the first thing I asked the guys was, Man, who are the best players? Blah, 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 uh -huh. you know. And then we got there, and it was an influx of talent. There was more lotteries. And, yeah. I mean, Trey Young left here with as much scrutiny. He turned oh, no doubt. over, he's here. And guys Great are rookie year. of the year. I mean, yeah. the number one, the number one leagues in the world in all sports. And so uh, I think it speaks volumes about the league the people who cover it but but also about that faithful you know you, you try to always be drawn to that and that's yeah. around the way you know saying a, a huge thank you to you guys because you're going to be there again that story sure. I mean when you shoot a blistering 30 26 <laughs> yeah. percent for the game and you get beat there's not a whole lot of good in that right but as men and as we try to portray uh character to our young men we got to take that as my man Mike Tomlin say we won't always like how it tastes and chewing on defeat, but we got to get better from it and then learn from it. So um, hopefully we can still experience success, but it'll take time to, to, to create our next all-leaguer and and maybe pro prospect. But um, I think we'll be on our way. So thanks to guys Absolutely. like yourself, man. Hey, appreciate, appreciate it, man. Thank you, you so much. Man. Talk thanks to you so soon. Much.